today's topic we're going to be diving into is about B vitamins in particular. I'm going to be talking about three B vitamins today that can contribute to a host of different types of problems including Alzheimer's disease, neurological problems, heart disease, bone loss, you name it. These B vitamin deficiencies are major, major issues why so many people have chronic illness in today's society and we're going to be diving right into them. And again, those of you who are new, you can check out our archives. Go to youtube.com forward slash glutenology and you can check out all of our archive shows there. You can also get more information about our mission helping 100 million chronically sick people find real answers to their health problems at glutenfreesociety.org as well as drpeterosborne.com. So again, welcome to the show. Today's topic is going to be all about B vitamins. Now, today we're going to focus on a few. We're going to start with vitamin B12 and we're going to roll out with folate, which is vitamin B9, and then we're also going to be talking about vitamin B6. And one of the reasons why we're talking about these three in conjunction is because they all share kind of a similar role in the body. They all take care of a chemical called homocysteine. And I want you to understand this is a very, very important thing. And the reason I'm having this show today is because there's a huge takeaway clinically that you can go to your doctor and you can really get some great information with a simple lab test. That lab test is called homocysteine. So take, take note of that because I want you to be able to get this information analyzed once you've read about it, heard about it, and, and uh, make sure that you, um, that you have uh, access to this, to this beneficial test that can be run. It's a simple lab test. So homocysteine is an independent risk factor for Alzheimer's or dementia. It's an independent risk factor for heart disease. It's an independent risk factor for nerve damage or nerve hypoxia. It's been linked to diabetes. It's also been linked to bone loss. So it's a very, very important chemical with a central theme. And those of you who've been following me for any length of time might have heard the term methylation. Homocysteine is a molecule that is central to a process in our body. It's a detoxification process called methylation. And so homocysteine, very, very important metabolically speaking. And if we, we have the capacity to measure it, we, we can get a lot of great information about whether or not we have these B vitamin deficiencies. So let's back up just a minute. I want to talk a little bit about vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 comes from animal foods. And so vegetarians oftentimes have an increased risk for vitamin B12 deficiency. So those of you who may be following a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet, it's very important that you ask your doctor periodically to check your vitamin B12 levels. You can, some people are suited for veganism or suited for vegetarian diets, uh, and some people are better suited for meat diets, and that's why there's you know, two sides of the fence. You've got vegans and vegetarians that claim how much better their health are when they're following that diet. You've got You've got people who eat lots of animal meat that claim how much better they feel when they eat that type of diet. It's because there are genetic differences amongst people and some people are better suited for vegetarianism and some are better suited for meat. But it's very difficult to get the quantity of vitamin B12 from a vegetarian diet. So vegetarians, it is one of the risk factors that you have. So just keep that in mind. It's a very simple thing that you can do to have your vitamin B12 levels measured. One of the ways you can do that is through homocysteine. And one of the ways you can also do that is to ask for intracellular vitamin B12 level testing done through your doctor. Now, vitamin B12 deficiency can cause depression and it can cause fatigue. Those are actually the two most common symptoms that we see associated with vitamin B12 deficiency, depression and fatigue. Depression in part because of homocysteine. Homocysteine elevations can actually contribute to depression because of why? Because it can cause nerve damage and depression oftentimes can stem from brain imbalances or biochemical imbalances in your brain. But vitamin B12 deficiency, also very, very important that you understand that it can cause anemia. So if we're looking at, you know, what are some of the things that vitamin B12 deficiency contribute to? The big ones, fatigue, depression, 
and anemia. So if you're tired, if you're lethargic, if you've lost your ability to focus and concentrate, if you feel blue, sad, you don't know why, there's no real reason why you're feeling depressed, and if you're short of breath, anemia, one of the big symptoms of anemia is shortness of breath. You're not getting enough oxygen because your red blood cells are not developing. Vitamin B12 deficiency plays a role in all three of those types of conditions. Now, one of the other big ones is nerve damage. And so, nerve damage, when I say nerve damage, let's define that as really as neuropathy, which is kind of a, the symptom can be numbness and tingling of your hands and your feet. A lot of people really start to develop burning or numbness and tingling in the feet as one of the progenitor symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. So if you're experiencing any of those things there, you should be suspecting a possible vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay. In addition, uh, it's important to understand that, again, animal-based foods Animal meat is where you're going to get a lot of your B12. Now, some vegetarians will use like supplemental yeast, um, and some will take like algae-based products that can contain some some B12. But those are somewhat harder for the body to metabolize. So again, animal meat is is the best source, hands down, in terms of quantity of B12 in the human diet. And if you're vegetarian, yeast or algae, but also supplementation can be very helpful. So just the key is again, check your levels periodically to make sure that, again, that these things aren't happening. There have been some studies that show that even in the vegetarian-based diets contribute, uh, to contribute to nerve damage in that way as a result of an increased risk for the development of vitamin B12 deficiency. It doesn't mean those of you who are vegetarians are guaranteed to become uh, nerve damaged as a result, but again, it's just important to know that so that you can get the proper testing done to make sure that, that, that that's not going to happen to you. So. Animal meats, yeast, algae, fatigue, depression, anemia, nerve damage, all symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. And some people also ask, what are the best ways to take vitamin B12? If you're going to take supplemental vitamin B12, there are different forms of vitamin B12. And, and some of them are created and are better than other forms. But there are four primary forms. And I'm not going to get into the chemistry of that today, but methylcobalamin, uh, hydroxycobalamin, adenosylcobalamin, and cyanocobalamin are the four primary forms. If you're taking a product or supplement and it says cyanocobalamin, so if you see that word cyanocobalamin, C-O-B-A-L-A-M-I-N, that's not the best form. That's actually the cheapest form and that's why a lot of your supplements contain it, but it's harder for the body to utilize, it's harder for the body to assimilate. If you're really looking for quality vitamin B12, methyl, and hydroxy are two of the best forms. As a matter of fact, some studies show that hydroxy works better actually at getting B12 into your system than getting an injection of B12. So those of you who do vitamin B12 injections uh, and, and you don't want to stick yourself with a needle, consider a solid hydroxycobalamin in a sublingual form because in a sublingual form, the vitamin itself absorbs in your cheeks through your cheek mucosal cells into your bloodstream directly. So even if you don't, even if you don't make intrinsic factor, many of you with gluten sensitivity have damaged stomach linings. So you don't make the substance called intrinsic factor that's necessary to absorb vitamin B12, and so you can develop vitamin B12 deficiencies. This is actually one of the most common deficiencies in gluten uh, gluten sensitive individuals for that reason, because gluten can damage the special type of cell that helps you absorb vitamin B12. So taking that sublingual, especially in a hydroxycobalamin form, works as effectively as an injection, but it bypasses intrinsic factors so that you don't have to worry about whether or not your stomach is damaged to the point where you're, where you're less capable of absorbing vitamin B12. So that's the breakdown, quick breakdown on vitamin B12. We could actually write a textbook on B12, but we don't have time in the show to do that. Let's talk a little bit about folate, vitamin B9. Folate. Or some people refer to it as folic acid, although that's not technically correct. Folic acid is a synthetic version of folate, which is used to fortify the foods in the United States, particularly a lot of your packaged foods uh, and all grains, so like your, your bread, your pastas, your cereals, things of that nature, are fortified with folic acid, not folate. And, and so actual folate is the natural form of of this vitamin, not the synthetic form. So when you're looking at supplements, you want to make sure you're getting a either like a methylated folate, a methyl folate, M-E-T-H-Y-L methyl folate, 
or something like a folinic acid. Those two are better forms in terms of supplementation if you're using folate in supplement form. But folate has several functions and some of those functions play a role here. Let me change colors. I'm going to draw some more arrows here. So folate plays a big, big role in a process called methylation. And methylation, in a nutshell, helps us to produce nerve chemicals. Um, serotonin is one of them, and dopamine is another. Now, most people think this is important for brain health, and it is, but understand that 90% of serotonin is in the gut, and about 60 to 65% of dopamine is produced in the gut. So folate is extremely important for gut cells to be able to function to help uh, create a healthy microbiome to be able to help you produce these neurotransmitters. You need it in the brain too, but very, very critical in the gut. And the gut talks to the brain, and this is why some people with folate deficiency can actually develop as well depression. There were some studies done a number of years ago, probably over a decade ago at this point, where they were using antidepressants, the SSRI medications, and they were using them without folate and found that they were not as effective. But when they added folate to the medication, they found a, a synergistic effectiveness. And one of the reasons why, again, is that folate helps you produce serotonin. The SSRIs as medications only preserve the serotonin that you're capable of producing. So if you're not producing your own, but you're just preserving it, it doesn't really serve you. You want to be able to produce your own, and that's where folate plays a critical role in metabolism. Now, folate deficiency can also, again, it can cause an elevation in homocysteine. We need folate to metabolize homocysteine. And again, I'm going to show you about that, that pathway in just a minute. So the other thing that folate is very important for is gut function. And one of the things that folate needs is necessary to do, and that's through the DNA and RNA replication. So you need folate to make new DNA and RNA. And why this is important for gut function is that the gut has a two-day life cycle. So the cells in the GI tract only live for about two days before they have to be replaced. And in order to, to return over cells that quickly, you've got to have adequate levels of folate driving DNA and RNA replication in your gut cells to make new gut cells. So when folate levels start to drop, gut function starts to drop. This is one of the reasons people who are on chemotherapy, like cancer-based oral chemotherapy agents, one of the ways those drugs work is they actually block the metabolism and the actual function of folate. If you've ever heard the drug methotrexate, which is a very common chemotherapeutic agent, it's also used in painful diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and scleroderma to subdue the pain methotrexate is. It's because it blocks folate. And again, the outcome of that is damage to the gut. It actually can help with the development of leaky gut. So folate is very, very important for normal gut function very important for normal brain function through the production of neurotransmitters, also very important for gut motility, but also very, very important again. It's because it blocks so You can see some overlap between the functions and the signs and symptoms of these two vitamins, vitamin B12 and folate. And, and there, you know, there, are, there is a lot of overlap simply because B vitamins generally play together. They generally help each other do the similar jobs. Now, from a diet perspective, if you're talking about getting folate in the diet, one of the best sources is green leafies. So get your green leafy veg, things like spinach and chard. Now some people that are gluten sensitive and have gut damage don't do well with green leafies. They don't digest them well. One of the things you can do to improve that and still be able to get your green leafies and your folate is to steam those vegetables or cook them down. And that makes them easier to process and digest if you're struggling with digest digestive problems. So green leafies Great source of folate, as is liver. Liver is one of the best sources of folate. So if you can bring yourself to eat liver, some people hate the taste, the texture. They didn't grow up with it. But if you can bring yourself to eat liver, it's a good source of folate. It's also a very good source of vitamin B12. So again, B12 and vitamin B9, crucial, share a lot of similar functions. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.